Hey y'all, hi. So today we're kind of doing a mix of things, a little bit of a mix of old and new. Technically the video is trying new makeup and there are a couple pieces of new makeup, things that I'm testing for a more thorough review in the future. Little odds and ends that have come my way from brands for review on my channel. I've put them all together and we'll be putting them on my face today. But I'm also trying a new palette in this video. It's the palette that I built for myself with my single eyeshadows in a video earlier this week. A lot of you who watched that video really wanted to see me put that palette onto my eyes, so I did that in this video too. So it's like a classic trying new makeup with a twist, the twist being that the eyeshadow is my old makeup made new again, which is something that I love to do. And if you're new here, that's part of the vibe. I really love makeup. I like to review new makeup from time to time, but I try not to dwell only in the space of shopping for what's new because I feel like a love of beauty isn't only about shopping. In fact, it's most mostly about applying makeup, using the makeup that you own. So I'm modeling a little bit of that today in and amongst the classic YouTube content. If you like it and you are new, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Okay, so I'm starting with uh, just a couple of layers of different kinds of serums on my face. That's the skincare that I put on this morning, but I saved the last one for putting on on camera because it's new. This is one of the very, very few things that I've purchased for myself in the year of 2023 so far. Is it the only thing? I've been doing pretty well at resisting the urge to buy things. If you haven't been following that saga and you'd like to know more, I'll link a video or two down below. This is the Make Beauty Reverse Emulsion. It's the newest skincare release from Make, a brand that I've reviewed before, a brand of which I'm a huge fan. I'm especially a fan of their skincare. It was Khaki who convinced me to get it. I was at her house and she just couldn't stop talking about it. She kept showing it to me. She was like, you have to put this in the back of your hand. You have to see how great it is. And she's right. And also it's a product that serves a purpose of which I'm particularly fond. It is a very liquidy but not watery serum. And I think of it as like a last step skincare product that can also work as a primer because the finish that it leaves is so beautiful. Kind of like Glossier Future Dew. Actually, exactly like Glossier Future Dew, but it doesn't stay as kind of like slippy and emollient on the skin as Future Dew does. It sets a little bit more. So that's my dream, right? Because I love Future Dew and I've actually gone through a couple of bottles of it. But the fact that it stays so slippy and slidey and sort of always mixes with whatever you put on top of it, that was its only flaw in my eyes. So the one thing about this is that when I first got the bottle and I started applying it, I thought that it was pilling or that something that I was putting it on top of was pilling because I could feel like a little tiny bit of texture, but I couldn't see the pills and I couldn't figure out what it was that was pilling. And it, it wasn't like causing visible pilling on my face, just that I can feel almost like a slight graininess in the texture. And after messing with it with a lot of different things on a lot of different days, I've determined that that's just the texture of it. I think that it might actually be some slightly reflective particles in it or something that's causing me to feel something that feels like very, very fine pilling but just isn't because, you know, the issue with pilling is like the gunk that it leaves behind on the skin and it's just not doing that. So I had to get used to that. But once I realized that it's just how it feels when it goes on, I was fine with it. The thing about it is the super hydrated, glossy skin finish that it leaves. So while I let that set, I'm going to do brows and eyes, actually. I think I'm going to do eyes first because I have a vision for my eyes and it might be a vision that causes some fallout. We'll see. This is new from Benefit. They sent it to me for me to review it on my channel. It's the Fluff Up Brow Wax. And not a moment too soon because you know I recently ran out of my Patrick Ta laminating brow gel. And I just haven't gotten around to repurchasing it. So I have just been using this Gen C Arch Support Brow Powder Fiber stuff, which works really well, but it doesn't have the hold of other products. Hold isn't really its main gig. So I'm so glad to have this Benefit product, which just works brilliantly as all Benefit brow products do. I'm actually surprised by the firmness of the hold, the sheerness of the wax, the softness of the application. It's just great. I'll have to keep using it for a little longer before I decide if it's really gonna actually be a stand-in for the Patrick Ta. But so far, since this came in the mail, I actually haven't missed having the Patrick Ta. I feel like it's really working. And the nice thing about having it be sort of a soft wax instead of a really stiff gel is that it combines 
combines really well with the other brow product that I've been using. So I'm gonna brush my brows up and shape them a little with this and then put a little bit of the Gen Z product in on top. That's what I've been doing. It's been working pretty well. This kind of reminds me of the Refi brow gel. Maybe not as aggressive, but in terms of like the waxy consistency, the, the cream, it's like a cream. It's like a wax cream that sets. This is the Gen C product. It's not new. It's something I've had for a while. It's a dead ringer for that CoverGirl fiber brow gel stuff that has for some reason been discontinued even though everybody loved it. I just remember it in this moment that I'm trying to go for a little bit more of a natural look today. I don't know how well I'm going to accomplish that on the eyes given my vision, but I'm going to try to keep it pretty low-key everywhere else because Joe and I are going to dinner at the house of some tango friends, which is just really exciting. Exciting. We moved from LA to where we live now, gosh, eight, nine months ago at this point, and we didn't come to a this place knowing a lot of people here already. My sister and her partner live here and, you know, we love them. We're very close to them, but we don't have like a community. And it's weird when you move somewhere as an adult, especially if you work for yourself from your house. So there's not like a work community there for you to start with. There's like nothing to start with, like nothing to go on. It can be hard to build community. So we finally started going out tango dancing again a few months ago, and it has just been so joyful to connect with people. Some people who we have have known for all of our tango dancing lives, but just, you know, we haven't lived in the same place. And some people who we haven't necessarily been friends with before, but it's just, we're all part of this global community. And so we just feel like an immediate affinity. Finally, like a sense of community in our new home. It's not like I didn't know that we were missing that, but now that we're starting to find it a little more, it's like I'm realizing just how important it is. So I'm really excited to be seeing these friends tonight. And it's not as though they aren't familiar with my fully made up face, but I think that if I wore like full glam to a casual dinner. It might not quite be the thing. So I'm not going to let myself go completely ham. And yeah, I think brows are one of those things that I feel like made up brows or like done brows inside the beauty community and on YouTube are just sort of standard, like part of the template of putting on even a light makeup look. But in the real world, a very done brow in certain contexts can just be like crazy town. Like people are like, what's going on with your eyebrows? I mean, maybe nobody's like that, but I feel like a struck kind of a balance here, right? Pretty natural looking. So I'm going to zoom you in for the eyes. I'm going to prime my lids. This is the part that I've been looking forward to the most for this look. And it's also the part that isn't new makeup. It's not me trying new makeup. It's me testing out the little custom palette that I built out of my same old eyeshadow singles in a video earlier this week. And of course, I will link that video down below in case you haven't seen it. And you want to kind of get caught up on the genesis of this little palette. There was a real hue and cry in the comments on that video for me to demonstrate an eye look or more. Today I'm only going to be able to do one, but to demonstrate the use of this palette. Here's what it ended up looking like. There are some super juicy close-up swatches of this at the end of the overhead video in which I built this palette. You can hear me talk through all of my decision making around the colors that I chose. Basically, I wanted it to give me something that my other eyeshadow palettes, my five pre-existing, like pre-made eyeshadow palettes don't give me. So I ended up going for this kind of grungy blue yellow palette, which is a total departure from my five eyeshadow palettes and still something that feels very me, but I will be able to build eye looks with this that I wouldn't be able to build with any of my five palettes. Especially the pre presence of green. There's a little bit of blue in my other palettes, like purple leaning blue, but green leaning blue, teal leaning blue, and like this chartreusey green and chartreusey gold. That doesn't really exist in any of my five palettes. So here's my vision. In that video, I talked about the three eyeshadows that I retained from the gold palette when I decluttered it being really inspiring to me, particularly this. I think this, is, this one was called Brass. It's a really, really textured, super shiny, greeny gold, kind of like a dynamic, flaky, old gold eyeshadow. This reminds me so much of the gold palette days, like the heyday of the gold palette, and how much I used to do like a bronze all over the lid, but then I would add this bronze with maybe a little bit of like that peacock blue, then I would add this in the center of the lids in a column. And it just, there's this sort of opulence about this green leaning gold that I feel like for me 
was unique to the gold palette. And the gold palette kind of led me down that path and caused me to really understand this color and the way that it works for me. So I included in this little palette because I felt inspired to sort of recreate that look. And I don't have anything like this in my other palettes, so I haven't been able to come anywhere close to that lately. But when I was building this palette, I, I took the sort of mid-tone basic bronze from the gold palette out and I replaced it with this kind of like taupey, almost plummy, definitely like violet undertoned taupe instead. So my vision is to use this as the base of the look all over the lids and then to light up the center of the lids with that greeny gold. So it's sort of like a take on the old gold palette look that I used to do, but a take that leans like purplish taupe with the green gold rather than peacocky bronzy brown with the green gold. I like woke up this morning with this vision in my mind. So I'm going to try to do it. And I am going to try not to make it too intense again because I'm going to dinner. I think it's going to be a look, you know what I mean? It's not going to be no makeup makeup on the eyes. But I'm going to try not to make it too smoky. That's the thing. That That is what I will do to hold it back. I'm not going to use black. And actually, I brought this Jones Road eyeliner. So I recently posted a video reviewing one product from Jones Road that I had purchased with my budget for review. It was the Jones Road Miracle Balm. And so many people have watched that video. I was kind of surprised. I think that there's a thirst for information about Jones Road. So I was delighted when the Jones Road team saw that video and they reached out and asked if I would like to review more stuff. And I was like, yes, I absolutely would. So I'm planning another Jones Road video that's going to be like a full face of Jones Road products that they kindly sent to me. I'm not ready to film that yet, but this is one of the products. It's the Jones Road eyeliner and it is in sort of like a soft, smoky violet shade. Actually, it's called violet. So instead of using a black or even a brown eyeliner, I'm going to use this as the eyeliner and that will hopefully also keep it a little bit lighter, a little bit softer. I'm going to zoom you in and do the entire I look and then I will zoom you back out and we'll check in about how it went. But I'll definitely show you the footage. Maybe I'll put music under it or something so you can follow along and see how it went for me bringing my vision to life. I did it. I feel like I did exactly what I said I was going to do. The absolute coup for me is that I didn't go overboard. I feel like this is a, a quite light look for me. It's like the light version of what I used to do with the gold palette, but with this purplish taupe instead of a bronze. I do think I might want to deepen up the outer corners just a tiny bit. I didn't even begin to try to do that. Like I didn't add, I'm just using the same taupe, just one little extra layer just in this like outer triangle wedge, not even blending it up, just anchoring it. Yeah, I feel like that helped with the sculpting, but without adding drama, just like overall what I've been trying to do here. I was worried I was going to end up with something that I felt was a bit much for dinner, but I don't think that this is a bit much for dinner for me. I think it's ideal. The Jones Road liner is not meant for the waterline. It just didn't want to transfer there. It's one of those quite dry crayons. It certainly transferred to like my lash line. Like it got a bright soft violet in amongst the base of my lashes, but I just couldn't get it to stick to my waterline, which is probably fine. I mean, that's probably contributing to the overall lightness of the look. And I'm going to try to add a pretty light layer of mascara as well. The Jones Road mascara came in that box of stuff from Jones Road, so I'm just starting to test it. It has an intensely curved, fluffy brush. Like, I've seen curved brushes before, and I've seen fluffy brushes before, but I don't know if I've ever seen one that's so curved and so fluffy. And I'm actually, because I want a light lash, I'm actually going to scrape it off. I'm, I'm into this now because it's what I've been doing with the one from Make. I even wipe it off a little bit just for the first coat. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I feel like it's still lengthened, which it does, and sort of curled my lashes up a little bit, but in a light way. There. Yeah, it's like a soft, unintimidating version of the kind of thing that I often do. I did get a bit of fallout. It wasn't too bad, but I'm going to wipe it off. And actually, I'm just going to put like a dab 
more of the reverse emulsion from Make there. Cause this is like one of the parts of the face that I think it looks the prettiest on. And now let us obliterate this redness using my same old makeup. This isn't new, but you know, I'm not gonna not use it. This is the green color corrector from EXA. It's the only one I kept in my declutter. I use it every day. This really rubs in like skincare. I feel like it becomes one with the skin instead of sitting on top of the skin, but it helps cancel out so much of my redness. And then I feel like I don't have to wear as much base on top. So again, an oldie but a goodie, the Rose Ink Concealer. I don't have any new complexion products to try right now. And same thing, I'm just gonna rub it in with my hands. By the way, I'm thinking of this as I put makeup on my forehead. I've been getting some questions in the comments about where my bangs are. People are like, where are your bangs? They're there, they're just either pinned back when I have my hair parted and pinned, or in this case, they're just long enough that they're sucked up into the bun. I just like variety and my bangs are getting a little long and I think I might grow them out. Again, I, I like to mix it up. I think I might grow them out for a little while. And so right now they're at that phase where when my hair is freshly, like freshly washed and quaffed, they're still fantastic. But a couple days into my week, and I, I go a week between washings with my hair, a couple days into my week, they start to get just harder to style. They're like at a weird length and they're a little bit harder to style. So I've been feeling better and fresher and more put together when they're out of my face, when I pin them back. But I will be appearing, I'll be reappearing with bangs probably for many months yet, so don't fret. Okay, so this is a very, I feel like, like real skin look. No sculpting with skin makeup. The reverse emulsion, it's like, it doesn't stay again as dewy as Future Dew, as syrupy on the skin, but it it has made the layer of color corrector and concealer that I put in, it has made it feel a little bit more, just a little bit more emollient. I think especially because I rubbed it all in with my hands. And I like that. It makes it feel kind of like a skin carry tint, but I have the coverage that I need because I've used my high coverage products and my color corrector. I still wanna spot conceal a little bit. I'm gonna use my NARS concealer as I do. Okay, so that has taken down the contrast uh, between the color of my skin and some of those scars and healing blemishes, but especially close up, my skin really, really looks like real skin, like textured, a little bit uneven. But this is definitely one of those days on which I would so much rather my skin look flawed and real than have it look quote unquote flawless on camera or at certain angles and then off camera or at other angles just look covered with makeup, you know? So I'm gonna stick with that and I'm going to try mightily not to go overboard <laughs> with the last step. I feel like we're not out of the woods yet in terms of like keeping keeping it subtle and approachable because there's still uh, cheeks and lips to do and I am totally capable of overdoing it, especially with cheek makeup. So I'm testing this brand that I've gotten a lot of requests for, but that I've never seen anyone talk about on YouTube. I don't know if it's like relatively obscure, if it's new, if it's more well-known in Europe. But once I looked it up, I could see why people have been asking me to review it because everything looks so incredible incredibly exquisitely beautiful. And it's also really expensive. So it's kind of this like, what's going on? Can you please get the tea for us situation? The brand is called Manasi 7. And I'm preparing a dedicated review of four products that I purchased with my budget for review. I'm in the middle of testing them right now. I still don't have fully formed opinions. And I'm throwing one of the products into this video because I'm trying new makeup here. And you know, every chance that I get to wear this, I take it because I'm trying to get a lot of experience with the products before I film the review. So this is the brand, I think, most famous product, like their best seller. Not necessarily this color, but the product. It's called All Over Color. It comes in a little pot, really luxe feeling this packaging and it's like a lip and cheek and I think also eye product. It's all over color so it's like this color that, in, that you can use anywhere. You can totally see why I chose this color, right? It's called Ciceru, the color, and it's got that kind of dirty mauve quality of gone grayish actually, of condensate from phytosurgeons, although it's definitely darker and more translucent than condensate. And it's a distinctly cool toned color. There are really clear descriptions of the colors on the Manasi 7 website and on in the Revolve listings because I actually didn't purchase these from the Manasi 7 website. I got them from Revolve, which is a website that carries a bunch of clothes and makeup and ships everything for free. So I was able to find everything I wanted to review from Manasi 7 on there and I just got it from there because I think it might have shipped from Europe if I had purchased it from the site. I'm not sure on all of the details of the brand, but I'll get myself together. I'll get all the information before the official review. In this case, I'm just trying this out for like 
the second or third time. So what I was saying about color is that they're very clear about the tones and undertones in every all over color color. And this one, I think made it really clear that there weren't any warm tones mixed in. It's like all cool. And you know, I'm all about that life for a blush. No chance of it going orange. Yeah, it's so plummy and dusky that it almost looks like a contour. And I'm sorry to disappoint some of you, but I'm, I don't think I want to put on any more than that. I will, of course, well, maybe a tiny bit. I will, of course, build up the color more when I review view this. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll go the distance. But because of where my day is going to take me today, I don't want to show up with like a draped blush on top of everything else. But I love that I feel like this brought a little color to my cheeks without adding the look of blush that I almost always get from pink and warm toned blushes. It really, really buffs out to like a natural soft flush on me. And that is the benefit of a color like this for me. I'm into it. It's a very stiff, very, mm, I mean, it's pigmented, but it's got that translucency, you know, so it's not like a crazy punch of pigment. It is definitely buildable, like it, it can be strong. But the thing about it is this is stiff, it's dry formula. It doesn't melt super easily and it has that sturdiness, which I think for some people is what they really, really want. And for some people, maybe they prefer something a little bit meltier, a little bit creamier. I'm using it on my lips too. So that's sort of one layer. I think you can really see the translucency there, right? It's like a buildable, almost like a tinted balm. With a thicker application, it's kind of of starting to look like gone grayish. I'm gonna swatch them next to each other because I still have all of those lipsticks down here from when I was trying to find a dupe for gone grayish. No, gone grayish is a lot more brown, but it's in the realm. I mean, it's it could have been in that video. I'm kind of curious about it's how similar it is to Ritual Defeat Prey. So Ritual Defeat Prey is closest to my thumb. Gone grayish is in the middle and Cicero from Manasi 7 is that big sort of variegated swatch on the bottom. It's got a lot in common with Prey, like a a lot, a lot, but I think it's a little bit more brown. So I haven't really spent some time with this color and what it can do until this moment. I've sort of just been putting it on, paying attention to the formula. This thick application of the color on my lips has impressed me, but I am more likely to wear it blotted down like that, especially to dinner. An intriguing brand about which I will be bringing you a lot more information very soon. But for today, I think it was a really good choice for finishing this look because it's like connecting to the dusky cool toned taupe in the eyes. The whole base of the look is that kind of grayish, lavender, gone grayish, ritual defeat prey kind of tone. And then the greeny gold sheen on the eyes is like contrasting with that and lighting it up. Mm, it's nice to be put together. I just haven't really been putting myself together as much as I like to, to feel my best lately. So glad to have had the opportunity. Really happy to have spent this time with you. And I hope that you've enjoyed spending this time with me. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. I upload a lot. I rarely upload fewer than three videos a week. Thank you for liking and commenting and doing all of that. And please don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Bye.